welcome to Love and Life's Journey DIY. I'm Chantel and I am so glad you're here. In today's video, I'm going to be making several home decor projects for spring. And these look so high end, but I'm going to show you how fun and easy they are to make using the Cricut. So let's jump in and get started. For this project, I will be making this set of wall hooks and using the Cricut to customize them for spring. The materials I will be using are this sign from Dollar Tree. It is one of the longer, skinnier signs, as well as three of these wall hooks that I also picked up at Dollar Tree. I got three different shapes of these, but they all have the same type of hook on them. I will also be using two of the larger five gallon paint stir sticks some white chalk paint and also some pastel colored chalk paint or acrylic craft paint will work as well. And of course I will use my Cricut cutting machine to customize my wall hooks. Thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring this video. This machine is so great because it will cut hundreds of different types of materials and you can design your projects in the free software that comes with it called Design Space and then it will send it to the cutting machine and cut out your projects for you. So um, it's just so versatile and fun to personalize your projects. For this project, I'm going to be using the Smart Vinyl, and while CC the cat doesn't seem to be too impressed, I love the Smart Vinyl because you don't have to use a mat in order to cut your design. I'm going to start by removing all of the hooks, hangers, and labels off of my little signs, and I will save those hooks and hangers because I will be reusing them. I'm also going to remove the hanger and the embellishments from my long sign as well. Next I'm going to glue my paint stir sticks on the what's the front of this sign but it's going to be the back of my sign and I am using some Gorilla Hot Glue. Uh, I would also recommend adding a little bit of E6000 just to give this a stronger hold. Adding these stir sticks to this sign is really going to provide some stability because the Dollar Tree sign is not real thick and so it's a little bit flimsy. I'm also going to add a little bit of hot glue into those holes where the hanger was just to fill them. You could use wood filler. I kind of like using the hot glue and then I just sand off uh, anything that is not smooth. Then I'm going to paint my sign using my white chalk paint and on what will be the back of my sign I'm going to give this several coats just to give it a nice finished look. And then on the front of my sign, I'm going to lay out where my hooks will be, and then I'm going to only paint what will show on the board, um, not underneath where I'm going to glue these hooks. That way when I glue them down, it will be a stronger bond. And then I'm going to take a little bit of black chalk paint and a dry brush and I'm just going to lightly dry brush over the tops of my white paint just to give this a little bit of a worn aged look. Next I mixed some of my pastel paints with a little bit of white to kind of lighten them up and then I'm painting my signs. I was going to do one in each of these colors but I decided not to do the pink and just to do the yellow and the lavender. And now that the paint is dry on these, I'm going to dry brush these with a little bit of white paint, just very lightly, just to uh, kind of lighten them up and give them a little bit of dimension as well. To add a little bit of a border, I'm just using a Sharpie marker and going around with a little bit of a broken line around each of my signs. So now I'm going to jump into Design Space, and this is where you can create your own designs or you can use ones that are already in Design Space. They have hundreds of free designs. They also have some that you can uh, pay a little extra for, but you can put these on your canvas and then resize them and uh, just customize it however you want it to be. And when you're ready to cut out your design, Design Space will walk you through each step uh, to choose your materials and to cut out your design. 
since I'm using the Smart Vinyl, I am going to use this tray that is also from Cricut. You do not have to use this tray, but it is very handy. So I'm going to put my vinyl in this and feed it under the cutter and into the machine. And then I'm going to let Cricut do all the work of cutting out my design. Now that my design is cut, I'm going to peel back what I don't need. And I started to do this, but I decided it would be easier if I cut uh, each design apart. So uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to weed out all of the parts that I don't need. Then I'm going to take some transfer tape and cut it the size of my design. Then I will peel the backing off of the transfer tape and apply it to the design. And I'm going to just make sure that I get as few wrinkles and bubbles as possible. And then I will go over it with my burnishing tool just to make sure that it is adhered to the design very well. To apply the design to my project, I'm going to peel back the backing of the transfer tape and you may have to uh, go over it a little bit with your tool if it doesn't want to release, but then I'm going to just peel that back carefully and then I'm going to position my design on my sign and go over it with my burnishing tool and then peel off that top of the transfer tape and it leaves the design on my project. I'm going to be using the same technique to place one of these flowers on each of the lavender signs as well. Then I'm going to add my hooks back onto my signs. And before I attach the signs, I am going to add the hangers on the back of my sign to use these to hang my wall hooks. So I'm just reusing the ones that were on the back of those hooks to begin with. Next, I'm going to use some E6000 to glue these signs to my backing and I'm also going to use a little bit of hot glue just so that they'll will adhere right away um, while that E6000 is drying. I love how the Cricut just takes my projects to the next level it makes them look professional and so high-end. For this next project, I'm going to be using the Cricut to make these beautiful paper flowers. To frame my flowers, I will be using these frames that came from Dollar Tree that have the cute bead hangers already on them. And I'll be using a piece of patterned paper as a background. Design Space not only has hundreds of designs to cut out, but it also has a lot of project ideas. I found this yellow ranunculus flower project and I printed out the instructions as well as the design on my printer and then I am using the Cricut to cut out these flowers. I love how much time this saves because I don't have to cut out each one of these flower petals with a pair of scissors. I also love that the projects come with instructions on how to assemble them. So to assemble these flowers, I am going to take a little ball of paper and I'm going to use this to start forming my flowers. I'm going to take the smallest petal and just fold the petals up around that little paper ball. And it's totally okay to kind of crinkle them and squish them up uh, because that's what gives this flower a more realistic look. 
then I'm going to add a drop of hot glue to the bottom of my little ball and I'm going to put the next size up petal on and um, I'm kind of rotating them so they don't all line up uh, all at the same the same way and then I'm going to just kind of fold those petals up and squish them together and I'm going to continue this with all eight of the petals. And just a little tip, I did print these off on an off-white cardstock, uh, kind of a beige color, so that it wasn't just white on the outside of the petals. Now I'm just going to remove that little paper ball from the center of my flower, and it is all finished. To prep my frames, I am going to sand them down because they do have kind of a shiny, smooth surface and I want the paint to stick to them, so I'm just going to sand them both down. I'm going to go ahead and remove the back from the frame and I'm going to be painting my frames using this yellow chalk paint. And before I do, I am going to add a little bit of painter's tape around those beads that are right next to the frame because I do want to keep the beads a natural wood color. Once my yellow paint is dry, I'm going to take a dry chip brush and some white paint and I'm going to do a heavy dry brush on this frame. I want it to not be so bright yellow, but I do want parts of that yellow paint just showing through. And then I'm going to take a little bit of antique wax from Waverly and I'm going to dry brush a little bit over the frame to give it that worn antique look. For the background for my flower, I'm going to take my patterned paper and cut out a square just the exact same size as that backing that we took out of the picture frame. And then I'm going to use just a regular glue stick and glue this right on top of that. Then I'll add that right back into the picture frame and glue my flower to the center and this piece is done and I did make a set of two of these and I think they turned out beautifully. I love how easy the Cricut made it to make these paper flowers. This video is part of a collaboration hosted by Yanni and Diane from Deco Easy, and it is 19 creators, bunnies hopping around the world. These are all Easter and spring themed DIYs from all of these amazing creators, so be sure to check out that playlist link in the description box below. In this next project, I will be using the Cricut to add faux leather floral accents to this spring centerpiece. For my vases, I am just using some jars that I had around the house, a couple of different sizes. And I'm going to be using this faux leather material from Cricut. This looks just like leather. It's thinner, but the Cricut machine cuts this out so nicely. And to add a little color to my jars, I'm going to be using some pastel patterned paper. So once again in Design Space, I found this project and I just thought this was so cute. And when I click on Make It, it just walks me through the steps of how to cut these out. And I can choose to customize these if I need to change the size um, to fit exactly what I'm making. You could cut these out of any material, but I am going to use the faux leather, so I'm going to browse my materials and just type in faux leather, and it will bring up that option, and I will just select that. And then uh, once I select that, it will uh, bring up the settings that are appropriate for that type of material. I decided to choose more pressure, but I don't think I really needed to. It cut through this just fine. And just a tip here, my mat that I was using was not very sticky and my leather started to kind of pull up and so I would recommend uh, using a little bit more of a sticky mat. 
course, one benefit was that my design came off of the mat very easily. Next, I'm going to take my patterned scrapbook paper and I am going to cut some strips to go behind my faux leather flowers. So I am just kind of laying my flowers on there to see how wide I need my paper strips and then I'm going to just cut them with my trimmer. And I do have one jar that is smaller, so I did size uh, one of my flowers down a little bit, so I will be cutting one of my paper strips a little smaller as well. I'm going to use just some plain old scotch tape to attach my paper around the center of each jar. And then I'm going to use my hot glue gun just to add a little bit of hot glue to secure my faux leather flowers on top of that strip of paper. And to finish off my jar, I'm going to just wrap some jute twine around the top about three times and tie a knot and then trim off the ends. And then I'll repeat this with the other two jars. To create a tray for my centerpiece, I'm going to be using this hexagon shaped mirror from Dollar Tree. A piece of shiplap looking scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. And some wired jute twine from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the mirror from the frame and I'm going to use it as a pattern to cut out a hexagon shape from my shiplap paper. And so I'm making sure that my lines are straight across there. And I'm going to just use a glue stick again to glue that to the back side of the mirror. This way, if I wanted to reverse this and make a mirrored tray, I could do that as well. I'm going to paint my frame with some of this chiffon cream chalk paint. It's an off-white color. I would recommend sanding down the frame a little to rough it up so the paint sticks a little better. I didn't do that and I probably should have, but I'm giving this kind of a rough coat because I do want some of the black to show through so that it looks like it's distressed. I also left the inside of the frame black because I wanted that contrast and then I sprayed it with a clear matte spray. And then I put my mirror back into the frame so that the shiplap side will be facing up. Next, I'm going to make some handles for my tray. So I'm going to take my wired jute and I'm going to measure six inches and fold it over. And then I will fold it over again so that I have uh, three strands that are six inches long and then I am going to cut it off and then I'll twist those together tightly and bend it kind of in a little rainbow shape and this is going to make my handle and I'll make two of these. Then using my Gorilla Hot Glue, I am going to attach the handles straight across from each other on the outside of the frame. Then I set my vases on the little tray and then I'm going to add some florals to them. But I just really love the contrast of that dark leather uh, against those pastels around the vases. I just think that is so pretty. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to see more budget-friendly DIYs, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. I will have links for all of the Cricut supplies that I used in today's video in the description box below, as well as that playlist for the Bunnies Hopping Around the World collaboration where you can find a lot of Easter and spring DIY inspiration. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.